try this again. Um, doing your fear early. This is going to be a challenging month for some people. This is going to be an easy month for others. Uh, you will get out of this what you put into it. September. September is a nine month. Uh, a nine numerologically, just go with it, is the end of a cycle. And that's why September we are studying, uh, what did I call it? Dying, death, and loss. Doesn't that sound happy and exciting? Ah! Uh, no, not at all. Really, no. It's kind of depressing. But the thing is, so many people have fears surrounding those things specifically that if we can wade through them, resolve a few issues, let go of it crap ton of baggage uh, we are going to be better people by the end of this month guaranteed guaranteed totally guaranteed all right um this week specifically we are doing loss what does loss mean to you does loss mean death uh, a lot of times people jump to that conclusion but there are a whole myriad of things that we can lose in this life that aren't the death of a person. Um, we can lose a job. We can lose a relationship. We can lose a friendship. We can lose a car. We can uh, have plenty of things come to an end uh, when we're not ready for them to come to an end yet. Ah, welcome to life. Hi, baby bear. Um, sometimes we just lose money. Like, a lot of hello. I haven't won yet. Yeah, well, I've won a little bit, but not nothing big yet. You know, it's, psh, get on that. Hello. Um, how do we feel about loss? Um, the thing about loss is we can't compare my loss to your loss. You can't compare your loss to Zena's loss. You can't compare that. Um, everyone's loss is extremely, extremely personal, and it's super, super, super important that we understand that and we respect that. Okay, um, getting over the loss of something, whether it's a relationship, whether it's the loss of a loved one through dying, um, through, you know, a disease that ends in death, um, we can't, we can't put a timeline on that. We can't put a stamp on that that says, okay, society says you should be over this relationship in at least a week and in a new relationship because that's that's how society works um you know if you lose a grandmother you get a month and that's it you make it a few days off work if you're lucky yeah i mean but no that's that's not how it actually works in our brains um despite what society says sometimes it takes us a very long time to get over people and things and experiences and loss <laughs> it sucks, but it's true. We are on our own timelines. We are on our own paths. And even though it, it may feel like we're helping when we're helping others cope with loss, it may not be such to that person. So always look for feedback. Now, uh, how are we impacted by loss? Um, how have you been personally affected by loss? Um, how do you even define loss? Some people really do jump to death. Um, some people see an interruption as loss. Some people, uh, for example, my sister has been trying to get a higher position at a retail shop for like forever. And every time they pass her over, that's a loss. It is. It's an opportunity that she was looking forward to, that she had expectations for, and it didn't happen. That's a loss. Um, how are we coping with this? Some people well, some people not well. All of us kind of in the middle. Um, how we cope can't really, you can't, you can't put a label on that. Um, I don't, I know that I don't do well with loss. I know, I know for a fact, don't do well with loss. I don't, I don't. Um, thankfully, I haven't experienced it that often, um, but I've experienced it enough to know myself that I know if it happens again, nah, probably won't do well. Uh, not in a self-harm way, but I certainly get anxiety, stress. Just, although, really, I've gotten a million times better since getting out of a bad relationship. Uh, so, you know, hopefully in my next dealing with loss, I will be better prepared for whatever kind of loss it is. Um, 
how, how do we define what's healthy and what's not? Because what's healthy for some people is not healthy for another person. Um, I'll never forget one of my ex-stepmothers. Yeah, yeah. Um, her counselor told her to break plates as an expression of release of anger and release of resentment and release, just release, just break. You know, he told her to break, break, break. And while I see theoretically that that could feel really good for a while, the problem that is that you still have to clean it up. And that's, that's the part really of life, <laughs> life, 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 where you start to, to break down and rebuild. Um, I'm sure that the breaking accelerated the process of release and the, the feel good and the endorphins and all that. That's not for me. Um, I had to find my own way to cope. And for me, talking with counselor was, was great. Having that feedback of knowing that I wasn't going crazy was really fantastic. Um, I, I absolutely, I always, always recommend to people, always recommend to people, especially if you are dealing with grief of loss of a loved one, to please, 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 please speak to somebody. Whether that someone is a friend over beer, uh, a friend with girly movies and ice cream, um, no matter what it is, uh, please, 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 please seek grief counseling. Um, it is very important, especially if you have not experienced death before, uh, that you have a handle, someone to hold on to when you're going through the process, because it really is a process. Um, obviously, you know, uh, the mental health issue in this country is terrible because we perceive someone seeking help as being weak, but that's not true at all. Uh, sometimes it's just nice to have a mental health check-in. And for me, I needed that to cope with the loss of a relationship, a marriage, um, a father to the kids. I, I needed that. For me, that's been my most recent huge loss. Um, you know, it sucked. It sucked. Nah, I'm, but honestly, had I not sought the counselor to help me deal with it and work through it, it would suck for longer and it would probably hurt me more because I was able to communicate about the grief. Because you really do go through a grieving process too. Uh, I didn't want to be resentful. I didn't want to be angry. I didn't want to be all of the things I had seen all of my other mothers go through. I didn't want that. I want my kids to have a happy, healthy, rational, sane, loving mother to give love to them. So here I am. And it wasn't that hard. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really nice. Um, a lot of people will avoid. Uh, when we talk about uh, job loss, when we talk about someone getting sick, not necessarily dying, um, although hospice, hospice care uh, would certainly fit into this as well. Um, people avoid in order to stay unhurt uh, really to just avoid the hurt and that's what they're doing um, they probably don't realize it until way way after the opportunity passes and then they'll regret the fact that they weren't involved in the process eh. seek counselor seek counselor um because if we avoid we're really we're still going to have to circle back to those feelings eventually um for instance uh we had to put uh one of our dogs down athena it feels like a long time ago. It really wasn't that long time ago. And I had the opportunity to either go or not go. And I knew that if I didn't go, that I would regret it. And I knew that if I went, I was just going to be a crying mess. And I said, would I rather regret this or would I rather be a crying mess? And I would to be a crying mess. Um, simple decisions like that, you know. Uh, a lot of people, when they're like, I didn't get to say goodbye to a loved one. They don't have that closure. Um, and we all, we all need closure of one kind or another, whether it's forgiveness for ourselves or actually, you know, speaking to somebody that we want to say we're sorry to. Um, and that's why a lot of people seek out mediums really is to say they're sorry. So don't avoid. First step in the process. Um, now when we're talking about loss, obviously we need to circle around all the way around and talk about how do we fear loss. 
Um, I think we naturally fear loss because we like things the way that they are. That's why we have our rooms set up certain ways. That's why we have our favorite drink. That's why we have our favorite whatever. I love this sweat jacket. I really like this shirt. Uh, this is my nope shirt. Um, I, I, we surround ourselves with the things that we like. Um, if we lose them, well, we don't want to lose them. That's the entire point. How do we deal with the fear? What would I do if my favorite jacket got a tear in it? It'd be super sad. I'd probably try and fix it rather than go out and buy another one because I really like this jacket. That's, that's how I would cope with that. <laughs> um, why do we fear loss? It's natural to fear loss. It's natural to fear change. When we talk about loss, it's a very specific change, like loss. Loss, it's a huge, very tiny word. It's very impactful. But how are we going to deal with that fear? Are we going to say, all right, I'm gonna avoid. I know uncle, whoever uh, is dying from I, I, uh, the f pneumonia, okay? And I, I could either go to the hospital or I could not. And well, I hate hospitals. So let's just say I don't go and uncle dies, okay? Well, the first thing, the first thing that people think about at funerals is obviously money. What are they getting out of it? Which sucks, but sadly that's true. Um, also, it brings people together. The magic of funerals, right? Um, but when you get to the funeral, everyone's like, why weren't you at the hospital? And it's like, oh, well, my kids, work, dogs, excuses that I could think of because there's a million excuses. There's always a million excuses. Um, you know, and then somebody, of course, will say, oh, he would have loved to say goodbye to you. And you're like, whether it's true or not, you know, you know, <laughs> uh, how, how are you going to deal with that? You know, how we didn't go because of the fear. We avoided. And then we got to the funeral and it's kind of rubbed in your face because well that's literally what happens a lot so yay go society um they see this a lot with hospice care um a lot of people that are sick kind of end up alone at the end because people are afraid of death people are afraid of loss they don't want to be there the problem is it leaves the person experiencing the loss experiencing the death alone <laughs> completely alone and who wants to die alone no nope. but well I don't know I probably wouldn't mind dying alone but most people don't want to die alone because they're afraid of death and dying hello life calling captain obvious yeah okay um one of my friends parents works with uh volunteer hospice care and it's a beautiful setter um they do amazing work for people that you know don't have a lot and it's, it was an extremely humbling experience knowing that people weren't alone when they were leaving. And that's, that makes my heart swell up to like five bajillion sizes bigger than it was because death isn't something to be feared, but it's the most natural thing in the world to fear. God, I'm at 13 minutes. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm gonna go through this. Um, loss is really dealing with our own selfish view of the loss. It's not actually dealing with the loss of the person. It's dealing with our loss of that person or thing or experience or whatever. Um, a surprise loss versus an expected loss uh, is completely different. If we know that uncle was sick with pneumonia for two weeks before he passed away, we know he's going one way or another. Uncle's going, all right? Whereas if cousin Sue got to a car accident and died well it's gonna hurt more because we didn't expect that i don't know why it hurts more it just does a surprise loss somehow is more impactful than an expected loss sucks it's true um people almost always come together over a loss sometimes it's for a good thing uh home fires a lot of times we have barn fires locally People always come together to help out the family, to help out the animals, uh, and deal with, you know, the aftermath. That's wonderful. That's amazing. That's how it should be. Um, doesn't always happen that way. How do we deal with this? Because this is, this is a, a boatload of crap that I'm giving to you this week. I'm giving you, I'm literally giving you a bleep ton of crap to deal with this week. This is huge. 
That's why I'm giving you a sneak peek of the rest of the month for sticking with me for 15 minutes and 5 seconds. Um, so we're doing loss this week. We're doing hurt next week, dealing with limiting our life. Uh, the third week we're dealing with caretakers of death, and the fourth week we are discussing death and only death, okay? Heads up, because it's going to be an interesting month. Remember, you're going to get out of this what you put in, okay? Uh, if I were you, I'd start writing. What does loss mean to me? How do I typically deal with loss? How do I apply self-care in a way that is healthy? How do I overcome the fear of loss? Do I not get into a relationship because I'm afraid of being hurt? Or do I jump in head first and then escape before it gets serious? I see that a lot. No, thank you. Um, you got this. You got this. This is going to be a really cool month anyway because of all the astrological wonderful coolness. This is a great month to unload. So what we are doing is we are opening our baggage. We're going to peer in. We're going to root through it. And then we're going to throw out the crap we don't need so that we can move forward with lighter bags. Okay? I'm going to have a great vacation, but I'll be thinking of you guys because this is a tough one. I love you. I'll talk to you later. Bye.